So I do my rear wheel drive setup on my uh, RC drift car. This is the new Eagle Racing Broadtech rear wheel drive drift car, the R31. Uh, it is such a good platform for RC drifting. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do exactly my setup. Uh, I'm going to give you a few tips and a few tricks because it may save your life and you will impress others by how well your car will drive. <laughs> I do all my filming with uh, Drift HD camera, HD, and uh, also comes remote, so you can do remotely as well, which is pretty cool. All right, so here we have it. Here is uh, the Blue Star for You setup that I'm currently using. They've seen that you've currently been seeing in the videos. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and state straight off the bat. I have ride height equal front and rear. It's uh, seven and seven. The front has zero droop, and the back. Big ol' goose egg as well. Zero droop in the rear. Okay, I currently got the Eagle Racing Gyro in there. Very nice. Ah, oh, the front camber. It is currently 14 degrees, and the rear is 13 degrees in. Uh, I'll tell you why in a little bit why I'm doing so much camber. Well, I'll tell you right now. It's because I got this 190 body, and I really want to make it work, and that's the only way I can make it work. <clears throat> when you set up your droop screws, uh, just back them off a little bit. I'll pretend I'm backing them out here and back them out over here. So I just unscrew them. Do the same thing with the back. Unscrew it back there and unscrew it back over there. And uh, that means when you lift up your chassis, the wheels are going to drop down just like this. You lift them up and your wheels, they fall. Uh, the, the suspension arms, the suspension arms will fall. Same thing with the rear. Uh, technically, I like to keep it at zero, meaning that when I lift up the chassis, there's no movement at all. I prefer it that way so that the front is very, very efficient. Whenever you have weight on the front, the steering will be efficient and it will actually carry you in the way that you're pointing. Uh, otherwise, you have understeer and the car will want to make a donut. <clears throat> if you have more grip in the rear, it's going to initially want to understeer and then it's going to oversteer on you. So you don't want to walk that razor's edge of uh, tuning and stability and driving because it's very difficult to do that way and I totally don't recommend it. I always recommend the 60 40 split for the ratio on the weight. Okay, um, with the ride height, let me use the ride height gauge right here. By the way, all the tools I use are from Eagle Racing. I use them as my one stop shop. Uh, therefore, I don't have multiple shopping carts from all these different stores because, you know, I've been in this for a bit and I realize it's easier just to get everything in one store. If they got it, just get it all in one store. Okay, got my ride height gauge right here and, uh, whoop, oh, right there. That's a bit off. That's eight millimeters in the back there and seven and a half. I like having my ride height and my droop zero, meaning uh, my ride height will be seven. This one is not. So I'm gonna have to lower that a little bit. Okay. Uh, no, we need a little pop right there. Pop it. Oh, too much, too much. Let me bring that back up. Okay. <clears throat> no. Pop it. You're embarrassing me, car. Too low. What's wrong? I bought that too much. Okay, so let me go ahead and do a little squeeze right here. Do a little squeeze right over there. Right now I'm just in the shock, uh, the shock caps. They're called shock collars, if you will. I'm gonna go a little further on it. <clears throat> right there. Ah. That's how you adjust your ride height. So always make sure before you adjust your ride height. You back off, like I said, you back off those droop screws using your hex driver. This one is a 1.5 millimeter. You back it out a little bit. You get your right high gauge inside there. <clears throat> and if it's too low, you got to adjust it by the shock collar. It's adjusting preload, but that's the way it's done. All the on-road torn guys told me that's how you do it. And that's what I've stuck to all these years, and it works out very well. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's get a little pop to set the suspension so I know where you're at. Okay, you still gotta go a bit further, almost there. All right, other side. All right. Oh, there it is, okay, finally. What's my droop at? Gotta bring it down just a little bit. Now, when I adjust my droop, 
let's say my right head is sitting at 7 and my droop right head is at 7.5, that means I gotta bring that screw back down just a little bit. So I will actually just raise it right here and help it up. Check where I'm at. Got half a millimeter. Give it a little bit of a turn there, see where I'm at. Ah, oh, sitting perfectly right on 7. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. This should be right. Okay. Perfect. Okay, good, good, good. Back is all set up. Now I'm gonna do the front. Okay, I just previously done this, so everything should be in line. Nope, front's a little bit too short. And same thing on that side. Give it a pop just to double check that. Uh, six and a half, and I got a another six and a half over here. So I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. And I'm getting inside there. Back off the screw. The back of the screw over here. Okay, now I'm gonna give it a pop. Check the right height. Okay, good. On seven and seven. So now, where am I? All right. So now, see how as I lift it up, I'm raising up the front suspension. I'm gonna check where my right height gauge is at. It's at eight. So I gotta just bracket off just a little bit. Bring the screw down just a little bit. Okay, a little bit more right there. No, gotta go a little further. A little bit further, a little bit. Okay, let's check this side. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. In there. Okay, it's on 7.5. A little further. Okay, right, there we go. So the reason I had to redo this droop setting is because I, initially when I had done it, I brought the droop screw down a little bit too far. When you put that droop screw down too far, it affects the ride height. It brings the chassis in the middle down like that. If you're looking at this, it's a little hot dog bandaid. I kind of cut myself while I was cooking. So uh, disregard. All right. <clears throat> so now I got the right height set. I got my droop set. Okay, I'm going to double check my camber. I had just done it. It should be perfect. Okay, I had a 14 in the front, so go ahead and place it right here, right there. And that's pretty spot on. That's pretty good. And this other side is pretty good. I mean, it's off by maybe a CH. Uh, some of you don't know what a CH is. I just learned the other day, my friend told me it's off by a CH. So I'm like, CH, what's that? Uh, he told me it stands for, don't tell anybody that I told you this. CH stands for cunt hair. That was nasty, yeah. So you can fit about one of them in here. Actually fit about two, maybe three. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not worried about that at the moment. So like I said, so, um, right, seven in the front, seven in the rear, zero droop in the front, zero droop in the rear. Camber is 14. The rear should be, as I said it, at 13. Do this right per. Okay. Close that up. Let's check where I'm at. Get a little poppy. All right, about a CH off. Don't worry about it. All right, and that's actually spot on. Perfect. Okay, good. Oh, by the way, today's camera gauge has been brought to you by Eagle Racing. Goes up to negative 22 if you need it. I don't need it, but it's good enough for me. <clears throat> okay, so we got everything in alignment here. Uh, if you need to adjust, the Ackerman, Ackerman is the, uh, for those of you who don't know, is let's say your wheels are straight like this. When you go full lock like that, your one tire, if you have positive Ackerman, your tire over here will actually be towed out a little bit like this. You get that? Get it? Same thing over here. The tires are like this, you have positive Ackerman, your chasing tire or trailing tire would be a little bit positive out. Uh, people may do this for, is my cat. The, uh, so the reason for this, it may change the arc uh, and scrub radius and I don't know, some magic goes into there. But normally people in Formula D and all the drifting thing, places, they like to have parallel lock. And that's what I currently did right here. I have just a little bit of a positive uh, Ackerman, but I don't really mind too much. But if, you know, let's say you have too much Ackerman, we need full lock and it's like this, you need to bring this one in, go ahead with your center rack right there, in the inside, you wanna go ahead and make it shorter. After you make it shorter, then adjust your, your toes, all right? So the way you do it, you first, you do your toe, set it to where you want it, then check. 
Go to the side. Oh, that's rubbing up against the shock. Okay, I need to back, give some positive acumen, bring it back. Go ahead and make the center rack longer. And bring it right back out. And then, after you have that checked, put it in there. Check your toe. Should be good. Okay, uh, one little pro tip that I had done to uh, give some wider offset in the front, meaning wider offset means more grip, more control, more driftiness. I went ahead and I added a two millimeter spacer inside the little area there. On top of that, I went ahead and added a three uh, degree or three millimeter uh, suspension mount inside of there, inside there, um, and that will affect both sides bringing it out like this. The reason I did that is so that when I go full lock, I have more space between my rim and tire, rim and wheel, rim and tire, and the shock, so it's not touching. So I can get some parallel lock right there. Can you see? <clears throat> and also, another reason why I did that, I can run this shock all the way on the first wheel right there, sandwiched in between and nestled, nestled in the bosom of the spur. Yes, it's perfect in there. Now on the bottom one, I have it on the first hole as well, so it's enjoying its place right there. And it's not touching the spur. It may appear like it's doing so, but it's not. It's, ha it's actually half a millimeter away from the, from the shock collar. And if you recall, like maybe back in the day in math classes, and you could do all the work, and you came so close to the answer, but you're off by that whatever, by that one digit, the teacher would say, no, nope, it was either wholly right or completely wrong. Same thing applies right here. It may be a half a millimeter off. It's not touching. You're good. So don't worry about that. Okay. Also, what I did here for my steering stopper, the ones provided by Eagle, they're okay, but they're preventing you from getting massive lock. This right here is almost 80, 85, 90. Insane. Insane. Crazy. You got to go ahead and you put a uh, turnbuckle screw just like this, get some type of space or anything small, get something with a small footprint, and you put it on there. Make sure it's on the screw side so you're actually screwing in and not cross threading what you're doing it into. And you put it on the knuckle, and I'll put it on the most innermost hole close to the rim, therefore, you have the most amount of travel. Bam! Okay, uh, another thing, you do have the two holes on the bottom and on the top over here, or top and bottom. Put them on the most Put the whole, uh, put your adjustment links, whatever they're called, your ball end studs into the innermost ones and push that wheel out even further. Right now, the front is actually about three or four millimeters wider than the rear. Gives you more control and get more angle, so it's good. Okay, caster, you got a caster adjustment right here. Perfectly for me, I like having about uh, maybe one or two positive gain at full lock. So I like having the most amount of contact patch on, on the tire here. And also, that gives you. Uh, what is called, um, it uh, cross jacks the car. So when you go full lock, check this out. Uh, I took my ride high gauge. Like I said, the front here is sitting on seven. When I go like this, full lock, it actually raises this point right here up to eight and a half. So that puts weight on the opposite tire. This opposite tire pushes and helps you go this way and keeps you from spinning out. So having caster is pretty good. Okay, uh, you don't want to overdo it because when you get that crazy amount of caster on there, I mean, do what you like, but this is how I do it. If you put too much on there, you'll see your chassis uh, underneath your body going like this. You can see a big old craziness happening there. So it looked, looked very funny and weird, so I said, no, screw it, I don't really need it. Plus, when you have that much and that, that tire helping you out too much, it will prevent you from drifting. You go to go sideways, you'll start pulling in that direction. So. You can go ahead and avoid that. <clears throat> okay, uh, right here. Like I said, I got my shocks all the way up in there. I am using this 15 weight oil. You can use whatever brand you want. This one happens to be dynamite, but if anything, 15 weight is good. Threw them in there. These are uh, three hole pistons inside there, the little diaphragm disc. And in the rear, the same exact thing uh, using 15 weight oil. The reason I use a soft oil. Uh, because I learned from a real drifter uh, at one of the last events I went to, he told me, soften up the dampening in the front on the real car. So I'm like, okay, I could try that out. I went ahead, uh, he opened up my hood, put the softening, the dampening always soft, and I took it for a spin, and I tell you what, I held angle, I went sideways, 
and did not spin out. So I'm like, all right, that's going to apply to this car. And it worked. I'm holding more angle. And uh, the last event at our hobby tent, I did not spin at all that day. That was awesome. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, okay. We got ride heights. We got the droops. We got the cam camber. Uh, toe. Okay. I'm doing toe in. That's normally known as positive toe in if it's like this. I know it's kind of ass backwards when you got the camera going on. Camera like this is negative. But for some reason, the toe is opposite. So the toe in is like this. It's actually called positive toe in. Uh, I got that in the rear. In the front, I got toe out. It's therefore called negative toe out. I got about by one. Okay, so that's good. And anything else? All right, that should get you going. Uh, the motor I'm currently using is an 8.5. I got this one at Broad Tech, my one-stop shop. And it is an 8.5 Z-Zone D-Spec brushless motor with a sensor wire. <clears throat> I totally re recommend any censored motor because uh, censored is best. It's very precise when you're going on, you're driving it, you will enjoy it. 10 times better than any of those non-censored pieces of crap. Okay, and the combo is like for like 120 or so, yada, yada, yada. It's a kinetic ESC and the combo is awesome. Uh, you wouldn't need anything else. It works very well. Uh, the battery I'm using right here, technically right here, it is a 5600. Got the sticker off because it started peeling, so I just yanked it off. 5600. It's a bit bigger and more heavy, uh, so I made sure I put the battery position in a more forward location. Um, I, like I said, I like to have the 60-40 weight ratio. When I brought it in the other position further back, it actually took some weight off the front and was causing more understeer and then oversteer spin. So, like I said, there's many different. There, there are many different camps out there talking about different weight distributions. Personally, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, bro, I'm just saying, front weight is better. You heard it here, front weight better. So 60-40 um, split, battery's right there. In order to get this battery in there, I had to raise this top deck and change out a pulley because uh, it makes the, the, the belts too tight and touch on the, uh, the top deck right there. Take a look right here. By, uh, Changing the pulley from stock 23 down to a 19, I was able to get some space in between there so it wouldn't touch. Otherwise, the bell would be too tight, that would be touching there, and all hell all would break loose and people would die. It, was, it, it sucks. So, we got that right there. But if you want to just run a regular stock battery like this, it's, they're fine. You just pop them right in there and you're good. Don't worry about it. Uh, current spur and pinion is a 124 and a 22. Those, uh, that kind of works, works out very well with this motor. Uh, I can actually scale it down on the radio if I, if I need to. Um, actually, when I'm, uh, when I'm drifting here in the kitchen, I run it down to like 60%, but then when I go out to the carpet check, I bring it back up to 100 or even 120 if I feel like I need the speed. <clears throat> okay, now here's another thing. No longer am I mixing and matching tires. I found the best way of doing it is just equal tires all the way around, and always, always, Make sure you match your tires to the surface that you're on. Uh, here we go. Got these ones right here. Check this out. I got these nice little wheel uh, wheel holders, what have you. And I have different tires for different situations. Like when I'm just messing around by myself on a tile surface, I'll use my little treaded t drips You can get these from Broadtech Eagle Racing as well. And uh, I got them running off on the side so they wouldn't rub up on the fenders of the body. And they're nice and slow. and. Uh, has some uh, really good angle when you drive with these. But if, uh, let's say you want to drive with other people on a smooth, smooth surface, I would totally recommend the Eagle Soft, uh, Eagle Racing Soft tires. These tires have more gription to them, so you can keep up with little CS cars. Um, also, I have another option. If you decide that it's a little bit too fast for you and you want a little bit more slide, you can put it on the medium tire as well. So you have many, many options there. And of course, whenever I'm on a uh, uh, carpet track, I'll go ahead and use the Eagle Racing Hards. I think they have the most amount of slip. You use anything else like a normal T-drip, it's gonna be too fast. Plus, they get really hot and it'll actually melt the tire a little bit and glaze it up. So the Eagle Racing Hards, they don't heat up or do anything like that. So they stay very consistent. I totally recommend that. Uh, currently, <clears throat> my wheel offsets, like I said, are different from front to rear. Uh, in the back, I'm using a six mil offset and the front is using a three, three millimeter offset rim. Uh, even though this is actually a smaller rim pushed in further, it, the tr track width is actually wider than the back. Uh, the reason why I do this is so that I have a lot more control. Um, it actually keep, 
I'll be have stability when I'm going sideways. So I do wider in the front. This is something that I've learned from real drifters and actually just through trial and error. So I totally recommend that. Um, like I said, remember I, mo I moved the front suspension arms and this and that and that's how I did it. Okay? And lastly, if you want to hide those gross, disgusting, terrible body posts, you get some stealth mounts. You can put them right on here in the front. You can also get magnet, mount, uh, magnet mounts, which you can put right there and right there. Those are really good. But uh, I think I've gone over everything here. Okay, yep, so that's my setup. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like it, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. I'll show you some more stuff. Uh, at, feel free, ask any question. I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Um, but that's the uh, the bluest star for you, Eagle Racing R31, yada, 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 setup. And back on goes the Bowdy. And here we are. Okay, so there we go. Got, nice, got nicely stanced right there. And like I said, uh, for any filming, you can go ahead and use the Drift HD 1080p camera. And it works very well. You can affix it to any point on the body. You got double-sided mounting tape anywhere you like. There's a little snap ring. You can push inside there and hold it down. Film anything you like. Or if you don't oh, want to, go ahead, take that, some painter's tape, and strap it down the way you want. Also comes with a little remote device, so you can hit it from uh, from far away. But keep in mind, it isn't too far. About three meters or so. I don't know. So you got that. <clears throat> okay, and uh, get everything set up. All right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed.